It's been a lovely two years of worry-free backup and storage, but all terabytes must eventually enter the red territory. My system health screams for attention, my spare SSDs have run out, and USB sticks are just too small, and this whole 100% filled capacity will end once and for all. Welcome home, the new Iron Wolf Pro, the 12 terabyte monster from Seagate, is how we like to roll. In total, we have eight terabytes for 96 terabytes of capacity. I can't even comprehend how much that is, but I'm excited to set up the safety net for backup. So let's do it right after this. The new Toshiba XS700 external SSD comes in this beautiful and minimalistic design. Its ultra portable form factor is perfect for creative professionals on the go and with blazing fast USB 3 Gen 2 transfer speeds and Toshiba's excellent three year warranty, reliability shouldn't be a concern. Check out the XS700 from Toshiba down below. So yes, we got me another NAS and the reason why we went for something from Synology and not build our own server or do something with 45 drives, which by the way, we are working with and we are developing our own server in Montreal. So stay tuned for all those updates. But here locally, I just wanted to have something that is going to be future proof that will store or be able to store a ton of footage that is going to last for years and uh, just not have to worry about those red lines peeking out and filling out our terabytes of capacity for backup and archiving because I don't delete any of my stuff. Everything that I record right now is going to be uploaded to that eventual uh, you know, server. So just having as much capacity as is available to me is awesome. And so we've been working with Synology and Seagate to kind of make this happen. So with Synology, we got DS1817. So the NAS is pretty awesome. It's got eight base. It's pretty advanced in terms of functionality we have two fans in the back there are four ethernet ports two of which are 10 gigabit per second speeds which are awesome once i get my switch once i get a motherboard that has a 10 gigabit ethernet speeds uh, that's going to be utilized very well right now with my itx system it isn't but the whole idea of gathering components not all at once but you know, slowly gathering things and obviously connecting that to a future system will not be an issue. We also have two USB 3 ports at the back for external storage and SATA ports at the back too for connecting everything that is going to be visible on my network. Just uh, some options that I appreciate. Now, the reason why we decided to go with the DS1817 is because of its size. So we have eight bays, which is awesome, but look at how tiny it is. It's about the size of an ATX motherboard and height-wise is just the height of one the drives so that's awesome i can stash this under my bookcase you know out of sight out of mind i don't need a server rack i don't need an additional case somewhere so the convenience factor is a bonus to me and while yes it is an expensive piece just the enclosure itself is about 900 dollars, and then the drives themselves are about 500 dollars a piece you know, the whole combination becomes a bit expensive, but the convenience factor of just having the enclosure and being able to plug in uh, the drives and have everything set up automatically is kind of a bonus to me. And I'm already familiar with the DSM interface from Synology. So using and setting everything up uh, is just simple. The NAS also comes with two ethernet cables, a set of lock keys for those uh, front bays and a set of screws for two and a half inch drives and a power cable. Now those 12 terabyte capacity drives are awesome because I was able to fill 12 terabytes in about a year and this is with conservative archiving. So deleting some things that I know I might not be able to use and now I don't have to worry. These drives have a five year warranty and 300 terabytes of user workload data rate per year. I will not be able to come even close to that usage statistic. Now it was extremely satisfying populating all those eight drives into it. Actually, I really appreciate the toolless procedure with those brackets on the side. And uh, yeah, it was time to power the sucker on, plug this thing into my router. It's still going into a basic router, so I'm not receiving the full benefits of the speed. I am limited to one gigabit per second uh, transfer rights because of that router. 
but uh, still knowing that I have a lot more capacity and bandwidth uh, above what I'm currently using is awesome for the eventual time when I upgrade my router and the motherboard to support the 10 gigabit per second speed. Now the entire setup procedure is super simple, but the most important thing is naming your server. I think the name we've come up with is super fitting. The Iron Throne is now alive. And after entering the NAS, all eight drives were detected. That's excellent news. And for my storage volume, I decide to go with RAID 6, which gives me two disk redundancy, which means if two disk fail, I can still recover the entire volume. But for, for high-end hard drives like the Iron of Pros, you know, I'm not expecting anything to go wrong, but I still have that peace of mind because I will be uh, migrating my entire uh, volume you know there is no additional backup aside from this one so hopefully everything goes smoothly and so far with my ds16 play no issues there now i will say the noise levels of the nas with eight drives populated inside is audible it's not something that i was expecting or prepared for because my ds16 play is super quiet can never hear it but it's something to keep in mind if you're like putting it on a shelf and you can hear that stuff. So I will be putting it uh, at the bottom where it's not visible and not audible. Uh, so just something to keep in mind. And so the Iron Throne lives 65 terabytes of usable storage. Remember, we are using two disks for redundancy. So that storage is not being counted for the total capacity. But uh, 65 terabytes is awesome. I can finally offload all the archived footage and video projects from my USB sticks into the NAS. But I'm so excited because so much weight has been lifted off my shoulders. This additional 65 terabyte buffer means that for the next like two, three years minimum, we won't have to worry about even filling half that capacity. And so now I just, you know, it's awesome. I love it. And so big thanks to Synology and Seagate for making this whole thing happen. You know, storage stuff usually is not that exciting, but when we're dealing on something of that scale for terabytes, that's pretty damn exciting. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this one. Make sure to check out this other relevant content. Make sure to subscribe to our new Boot Sequence channel. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. That will be fully backed up, nothing deleted. <sighs> These are the days, yeah.